Hey, and welcome back to No Watch Cooking, where we're changing the world one recipe at a time with a splash of physics. This is day six of the 2022 seven day sustainable food and beverage cooking challenge. I'm so glad you've joined me again. Today we're shifting gears a bit from food to beverages to make a ginger lime spritzer. Beverages are a critical part of our food system and we don't always recognize it as such. So let's go ahead and make this ginger tea concentrate or what I like to call ginger magic. Okay, we're just gonna start with these ginger rhizomes which can be bought in the grocery store. Try to look for some that don't have any packaging. So after scrubbing the ginger, we're just going to slice this ginger. Taking time, it's pretty tough so we wanna just make sure we're using good uh, controlled chopping. We're gonna slice it. And then we're going to turn it and sort of uh, cut it the other direction. And then we'll slice it into little cubes. And just continue doing that to all of it. So you see it doesn't take very long to get all this ginger cut up into these little cubes. Okay, so now we're going to just put those cubes of ginger into our pot. Smells really delicious. And I just pour water until I have all the ginger submerged. And whatever height in the pot that is, I like to add about that much height again. So I'm just going to put about, so there's just about, a layer of water on top of the ginger that's about as deep as the ginger itself. And that's all there is to it. I'm just going to put the burner on high and bring it to a boil with a lid. All right, while that's coming up to a boil, let's talk about the importance of producing some of our beverages, at least at home, with tap water. So beverages are one of the major places that we encounter single-use packaging because it's really hard to bring a beverage that's pre-prepared home in some way other than a, than a single-use package. So that comes in the form of plastics often, sometimes glass, and sometimes aluminum. Looking at these graphs from the EPA, which show the total municipal solid waste that's in the landfill by materials, we see that the packaging that we use for beverages, which is plastics and metals and also glass, constitute a big piece of what ends up in our landfill. If we want to look at each of those materials one at a time, here's the graph for plastics, and we see that most plastics that are created end up in the landfill. Um, some of them are combusted with energy recovery, and then a small portion of them are recycled. We can do the same thing for glass, for example. And lastly, aluminum, which is our other common beverage container. And again, we see that for all three of these, predominantly these materials end up in our landfill. The additional advantage of making some of your beverages at home is that not only do we save single-use packaging, but we also save a bunch of transportation energy as well. Water is really heavy, and most of the beverages that we purchase pre-packaged are predominantly just water, and we get that stuff coming out of our tap in our kitchen. So the more that we can add that weight in the kitchen, the better off we are. Okay, my ginger has come to a good rolling boil, and so I'm just going to turn the burner way down on a scale from 1 to 10. I'm going to put it at about a 2 and just let it steep uh, for about 10 minutes before I turn the burner off. So let's talk about how to use a carbonator at home to transform tap water into seltzer water. Cooks Illustrated did a really great video about the science of carbonated and bubbly beverages, and I'll put the link to that video in the notes of this video. But in the end, the important parts are that you start with cold filtered water in order to try to get as much carbonation into the beverage as possible. I've tried to avoid any special equipment in this seven day cooking challenge. This is my one exception. I really like carbonated beverages, seltzer water, flavored all different kinds of ways. And so for me, I think it's great to have a carbonator at home so that I avoid single use packaging and also dramatically reduce the weight that I'm transporting to my house to uh, enjoy these beverages. Um, I'm using a soda stream. There's other manufacturers as well. They all kind of work the same way. And the great thing about this is it is really 
really zero waste because not only do you use the same container over and over for the water, but the canister in the back that has the carbon dioxide is also refillable. So when this thing is empty, I just take it to the place in my town that swaps out soda stream canisters and I just buy a new fill, full one and I give them my empty one and then they send the empty one back to be refilled again. And so this is really a great model of a circular economy. Okay, so I have to take a little physics break here because I'm holding a canister of compressed carbon dioxide, the number one heat trapping gas in our atmosphere. You may be asking how much is in there? Well, there's 410 grams of carbon dioxide in a full one of these soda stream containers. That's 0.41 kilograms. Now it's compressed in here, but if I allowed it to expand to normal atmospheric conditions, it would be enough gas to fill 14 12 inch party balloons. Now, you may ask, okay, so how does that compare to the greenhouse gas emissions from our food system, which would be an excellent question. If we go back to day four in this series, when we made that pesto pasta sprinkled with lentils and topped with roasted red pepper with a side of green beans, well, thanks to clean metrics, I can estimate that the greenhouse gas emissions to produce, harvest, process, and transport a single serving of that meal emits 0.4 kilograms of equivalent carbon dioxide greenhouse gas emissions, or enough, again, to fill about 14 12-inch balloons. I promise I didn't plan that to be the same that's in a full canister here. If, however, instead we replace the lentils on that pasta dish with ground turkey, a single serving of that meal would emit 0.8 kilograms of equivalent carbon dioxide, or enough to gas to fill 28 12-inch balloons. Let's take it one step further. If instead we replace the lentils with ground beef, the same amount, a single serving of that meal now emits 1.9 kilograms of equivalent carbon dioxide, or enough gas to fill 65 12-inch party balloons. That's a lot. To make one more visual connection, how does this compare to the missions from our daily transportation? Well, if your daily commute is 10 miles each way and you drive a gas internal combustion engine vehicle with an average fuel efficiency of 24 miles per gallon, your daily round trip carbon dioxide emissions, assuming you don't run into much traffic, is 7.4 kilograms of carbon dioxide or enough carbon dioxide to fill 254 12 inch balloons. That's compatible to serving that pasta with ground beef meal to a family of four. So our food emissions are not insignificant. All right, back to the recipe. All right, so again, I'm just starting with this cold filtered water. We can see it has no bubbles at this point, and I'm just gonna put it on here. So I'm just gonna press this down to allow the carbon dioxide to be infused into the water. This will carbonate it and also give it a little bit of a tang because of the carbonic acid, which forms when the carbon dioxide comes into the water. So when all three lights are lit, um, I know it's, it's done, and so we can see when we lift it up that we have a little bit of carbonation. Let's get a bit of a closer look at that. It's a little bit carbonated, but I'd like to do it one more time just to get it more carbonated. That looks perfect. Another key is to make sure you put the cap on right away so that we keep it carbonated until we're ready to enjoy it. Okay, now the 10 minutes is up um, where it's simmered, and so I just turn the burner off, and then I'm just going to let this sit until it comes to room temperature. All right, the ginger tea is down to room temperature, so we're just going to strain the ginger off. All right, and that stuff is ginger magic. So I'm just gonna pour this into um, a wide mouth pint jar so I can have this ready and waiting in the refrigerator. 
Okay, so in addition to that pint jar, I was able to fill an additional pint jar with the amount that I made today. And so what I usually do is, again, use the wide mouth pint jar. The great thing about these jars is you can freeze in them. There's actually a line here right under the edge that is the freeze line. So you shouldn't fill any further than that. I found that the best way for these jars not to crack in the freezer is that you slowly cool them. So I would leave it on the countertop first until it comes to room temperature. Then I would put it in the refrigerator and let it fully cool to refrigerator temperature and then put it in the freezer. And I found when I do that sort of slow cooling, rather than going straight from room temperature into the freezer, then they typically don't, don't crack. Then when I see the other one running low, I can just pull this out of the freezer and into the refrigerator. It takes about two or three days in a refrigerator for this to fully thaw. So if you anticipate it a little bit, that's great. You can also leave it out on the counter for a couple hours or take the cap off and put it in the microwave for it to defrost. And now you have ginger magic for days. The other great thing I love about having ginger magic around is that I make it for beverages, but when I have it, I find that it finds its way into other recipes. The other day I had some rice I wanted to just make a little bit more magical. And so I put a couple ladles of ginger magic, a little bit of lime, some garlic salt, some olive oil, a little bit of fresh cilantro, and it was delicious. So if you have a carbonator at home, and you want a bubbly, delicious flavored beverage and you don't want to go through all this trouble. I did want to mention also that you can buy these little concentrate flavors. Um, and so this little tiny glass jar here is enough to make 12 liters of flavored um, seltzer water. And you just use about a teaspoon of this in each of those one liter and they come in all kinds of flavors. I also wanted to mention that if you don't have a carbonator, you can still enjoy all these flavors in flat water. You can add the ginger and the lime and the sweetener into some icy regular water. It won't have the fizz, but otherwise it's really quite tasty in the same way you might add a squeeze of lemon into a glass of water. All right, the final step is just to assemble this. Again, you can be as creative as you want. So I'm just going to add uh, the ginger magic with a little bit of lime, and I like to add a little bit of sweetener. I don't always do this, but it kind of offsets the tang or the bite of the ginger a little bit. So really literally like a half of a teaspoon of honey, or sometimes I use agave syrup, right? These sweeteners that are already in the liquid form are much easier to dissolve. So I find that it's easiest if you try to dissolve those uh, sweeteners in the the ginger magic before you add the seltzer, right? Because once you add the seltzer, you don't want to do a lot of stirring because all you're doing is releasing the carbonation. You want to be able to enjoy that uh, carbonation as much as possible. I'm going to take about two, maybe three scoops of this. Maybe that's about a quarter of a cup or so of the ginger magic. All right, and then I'm going to squeeze about a quarter of a lime in here. Get all that lime juice. I'm going to leave the lime in there as well. And then I'm going to add a little bit of sweetener, about mm, a half a teaspoon of honey. And then I want to just make sure that I kind of muddle and mix all these ingredients together before I add the seltzer water. All right, that uh, looks like it's all dissolved. So now I'm just going to gently pour some of the seltzer in. Looks so good. I'm gonna add a couple cubes of ice. And there you have it, a ginger lime spritzer. It's so great. Right, you get that seltzer uh, along with the tang of the ginger and the lime offset a bit by the honey. Um, I hope you'll give it a try and again, get creative and try uh, different additions as well. All right, thanks for being here and I hope to see you next time for day seven. Have a great day.